studying another kind of uh, free vibration in which uh, we will be considering the dissipation of the energy when this particular dynamic system is vibrating. So, this is called damped free vibration in which case uh, we will be having decay of the vibration if we are talking about the free vibration uh, the vibration will decay after some time uh, due to the damping effect. Uh, this damping may be uh, in the system can be it can come from various sources one is uh, the material damping itself in which uh, may be the interaction at the intermolecular level uh, can take place and because of that uh, the energy is dissipated from the system in the form of heat or there can be uh, some fluid and solid interaction is there and because of that uh, the heat is getting dissipated from solid to the uh, fluid like a, if a solid member is vibrating in a fluid and uh, the fluid is damping or it is taking the energy of the solid and it is after some time it is trying to uh, decay the vibration of the, the solid structure or machine. Another form of the damping which is there in the system is uh, maybe aerodynamical forces which is uh, especially in the turbines you will find that uh, we are injecting the steam into the uh, turbine blades and because of these interactions there can, can be damping in the system or sometime we have two solids which are in contact. So, some kind of friction damping between two solids can also lead to uh, the dissipation of the energy. So, how to model uh, this particular damping uh, is, uh, is a question and uh, it is very difficult to uh, model damping as compared to the stiffness or mass because uh, whatever the models are available that leads to very complicated analysis of the damped free vibration. So, uh, as come, so that is why in most of the analysis we when we obtain the natural frequency of the system we neglect the damping effect uh, and uh, <coughs> we will see from the present study especially on the natural frequency the effect of damping is very less, but uh, especially they are very important when the system is going under resonance condition. Some simple model of the damping uh, people have developed especially when the force is proportional to the velocity of the vibrating body. Like in stiffness uh, the stiffness the spring force is in that we have it is proportional to the displacement. Similarly, uh, in this particular model the damping force is proportional to velocity. If we want to model a damping force which is proportional to the uh, displacement then uh, what will be the eff effect that we will try to see whether we will get some uh, damping effect or not. Uh, through some illustration I will try to explain that, but let us see what is the effect of damping. If you are talking about a force versus displacement relationship, so obviously if there is a damping in the system this particular plot should in a particular cycle they should enclose some area and that is the energy dissipation per cycle of the system and let us see through figure how the linear a, a, a damping force which is proportional to velocity or a, a damping force which is proportional to the displacement uh, they are different and uh, what is the, uh, the characteristics of that. So, let us first take a damping force model which is proportional to the velocity. So, in this we expect that uh, when we start the system it will go like this and 
during the oscillation uh, it will come like this and during this process it encloses one area and this area is the energy dissipation over one cycle of the motion and if we have one model in which damping force is proportional to displacement this particular diagram how it will look like it will because it is linear so it has to go in the straight line then while it is returning from here again it will follow the exactly same path and it will go other side and then while returning it will follow exactly same path like this and it will be keep oscillating on along this line and if you see carefully what is the area enclosed uh, by this that will be zero area enclosed by these curves will be zero that means per cycle there is no dissipation of the energy so this particular model in which the damping is proportional to displacement is not dissipating any energy so that's why we have to have some other relationship between the damping force and the displacement so the most simple model which gives a simpler mathematical expression when analyzing the the most simple model of the damping is this which gives simpler mathematical expressions in practical application if you uh, in practical application in uh, two wheelers there is a shock absorbers are present in the front wheel and the back wheel you must have seen uh, uh, near the uh, all the wheels we have two rods and uh, they have coils that is a springs and inside there is a piston and a uh, cylinder is there in which uh, liquid is uh, filled so during uh, motion of the vehicle when undulation of the road is there the vehicle starts oscillating it but after some after some time that oscillation dies dies out why it happens because of the damping effect whatever the uh, damping dampers are there in the system it dies out the uh, vibrations so let us see what is the principle how the working principle behind the damp dampers so in those dampers there will be one cylinder and there is a piston which is attached a rod now during motion of the vehicle which is having to and fro motion up and down motion this particular piston will also go up and down this particular cylinder is filled with fluid okay and in this piston there are small holes or uh, if you see the top view of this there will be small holes on this piston so as this piston is going up and down these fluids if it is going downward these fluids which are getting uh, compressed here they will try to go through these holes toward the upper cylinder and during this process they will uh, they will be having friction because it will be injecting with very high velocity through these holes there will be dissipation of the energy and uh, when this piston is going uh, upward then these fluids will again come back from these holes to the lower portion of the cylinder so by that way again they will be uh, losing the energy of the vibrating system so this is the basic principle of the shock absorbers
So uh, here, what I have shown in which uh, the dampers are there, which is dissipating the energy. Apart from this, uh, around this there are uh, coils also, springs are also there. They give the uh, to and fro motion, so that uh, if there is sudden jerk, then we do not feel those jerks directly, but uh, that will be taken care by the springs. So, now with this background of uh, the dampers, let us try to model mathematically uh, this system and try to analyze them analytically that uh, how this motion take place, uh, how the damping affects the motion of the particular system and the natural frequency of the system. So, for this uh, let us take a simple model in which we have one spring and mass and apart from this now we are attaching one damper also. So, damper we represent like this in which this represent some kind of piston, this is cylinder and C is the damping coefficient, K is the stiffness of the spring and mass m and here let us say this is the again static equilibrium position of the mass. So, when we are taking the reference as the static equilibrium position, the gravity effect will not come. Now, when we disturb the system through x, then we will be having uh, the free body diagram of this particular mass in which we will be showing all the external forces. So, stiffness force will be upward because the spring is getting extended. So, it will apply force upward onto the mass uh, because it is moving it will be having velocity also acceleration also. So, in this particular case we are considering the, the viscous damping that is uh, proportional to the velocity of the motion of the body. So, C is the damping coefficient. Apart from this, uh, we can have some external forces, but uh, since we are dealing with uh, free vibration, so let us not consider any other external force. And uh, apart from this, there will be inertia force. So, this is the free body diagram of the mass. Now, we can apply the Newton's second law of motion. So, that says that some of the external forces, so k x is one of the external force minus because this is acting opposite to the displacement direction which is downward, but this force is upward. Similarly, the damping force, these are the two external force should be equal to acceleration of the body. So, this equation we can able to write in more standard form like this. So, you can see that uh, this equation is similar to the previous one, only extra term is of the damping is coming. This particular equation uh, because is homogeneous, because the right hand side is 0. So, we can have the uh, general solution of this. So, let us take the general solution of this as uh, in the previous case when uh, we did not consider the damping, then we saw that uh, this particular equation of motion uh, in the acceleration was proportional to displacement and because of that uh, we were sure that uh, the motion was simple harmonic, but now another term damping has come into the equation. So, we will be will not be having the simple harmonic motion of the motion. So, that is why now we are looking for the general solution of this particular 
equation. So once we assume this solution where S is a constant, because the equation of motion contain derivative of this displacement and velocity. So, the velocity can be written as like this and acceleration can be obtained as S square EST. Now, if you substitute this in the equation of motion, we will get m s square plus c s plus k and this term is common is equal to 0. So, this quantity uh, cannot be 0. So, obviously, the terms within the bracket has to be 0. So, that uh, what were the assumed solution is the solution of the differential equation. So, we are getting a condition. If we are able to satisfy this condition that this quantity is 0, then this particular expression is the solution of the original equation. So, let us equate this to 0. So, this is a quadratic equation in terms of S. So, we can able to solve this equation. Uh, better we can write this as in this form, the solution of this because this is a quadratic in S can be written as it will be having two roots S 1 and 2. So, can be written as this. So, plus and minus gives two roots. So, we have S 1 and S 2, two solution of the, uh, the two, con two constants we have got. So, we have two solutions and those two solutions can be combined to get the general solution. So, S 1 t is one of the solution, A is a constant and B S 2 t. So, this is a general solution where A and B are constants and these constants to be we have to obtain using the initial condition of the system. Initial conditions how, how much displacements we are giving to the mass or how much velocity we are giving to the mass from there we can we can able to obtain these. So, we need two initial conditions to get the two unknown constants and if we substitute the S 1 and S 2 from here, uh, we can able to write this as x. I am taking some of the common terms. So, this particular term I am taking common after substituting here. A then square root of c by 2 m square minus k by m then second term which is negative of this square root so this is the general solution of the differential equation for damped vibration. Now, here you can see that uh, this particular quantity within the square bracket, if uh, within the bracket whatever the quantity is there, if this is positive, then we will be having uh, these terms and these terms as non oscillatory terms because all are decaying uh, or uh, exponential terms will be there. But if this quantity within the square bracket is negative, then we will get the complex quantity in the exponent of E and that uh, quantity we can able to express in terms of the sin and cosine function. Like 
if you have j theta then it can be written as in terms of the sin and cosine then we will be having uh, some harmonic component in the response. So, oscillations will be possible and there is another condition in which uh, this term is 0. There is a very critical case. So, we will see these three cases separately and uh, we will analyze them. So, first case when within the square bracket uh, this term or I should say this quantity is greater than k by m. So, that means within the square root we will be having positive quantity. So, all the equations here yeah. So, there will not be any any oscillatory terms. So, no oscillation will be possible. And this is called over damped system. What is happening in the system? We are disturbing the system and it is gradually coming to the steady position without any oscillation about the mean position. Second case is C by 2 m is less than k by m. So, in this case within the square root whatever the term is there that will be negative. So, we will be having uh, this kind of terms imaginary quantity will be coming outside because negative is inside. So, I have written in the form of imaginary terms. So, you can see because of this we will be having cos and sin terms and uh, we will be having oscillations in the motion and this is called under damped system. Third case when these two quantities are equal, when these two quantities are equal that means k by m, then we call this damping as critical damping and we represent C, C as critical damping. So, critical damping uh, is defined like this. So, we can able to see that it will be k by m or can be simplified as because this we know we write as omega n that is uh, omega n I am calling now as undamped natural frequency because uh, root k by m is the natural frequency of the system when there is no damping. So, that is why this undamped natural frequency terms is coming. Uh, this even we can able to simplify as k by m and this is the definition of the this is the definition of the critical damping and we define another term that is a non dimensional term that is called damping ratio which is zeta and is defined as the damping coefficient divided by the critical damping and this is non dimensional quantity. So, it is having lot of advantage we will see how the expressions get simplified because of this particular term. So, let us write the equation of motion again and uh, we will try to 
simplify the equation of motion in terms of these non dimensional terms. So, this was the equation of motion for damped system and uh, now we are gradually introducing the non dimensional terms. So, C we are writing as zeta C C zeta is the damping ratio this is the critical damping x dot plus uh, this we can write as natural frequency there is undamped natural frequency and then we can simplify this as because this critical damping can be written as plus omega n square into x and again you can able to simplify this further that will be 2 zeta omega n because m will get cancelled x dot plus omega n equal to 0. So, this is a very important form of the equation of motion it is useful for uh, especially when we will be dealing with the multi degree of freedom system and uh, when we will be trying to find the damping and the natural frequency of the system through experiment. So, these uh, equation of motions will be very useful in that case. Now, we will uh, uh, obtain the similar quadratic equation as we obtained earlier for one assumed solution general form of solution to this uh, from that we will be getting uh, s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega square n s. Basically this equation is in mathematics is called characteristic equation. and in vibration we call it as uh, frequency equation frequency equation and uh, because this is quadratic we can get the roots of these two we will be getting two roots of this and uh, this will be of this form zeta is nothing but damping ratio. So, this is the two roots of this characteristic equation. Now, from here you can see that uh, when zeta is greater than 1, then this quantity becomes positive al always. So, both the roots of this equations are positive. So, we will not be having any oscillatory terms in the solution because exponential terms are all real. So, there is no oscillation. So, this is called over damped system as we defined earlier. If this zeta is less than 1, this quantity within the square bracket will be negative and we will get a imaginary quantity here and when we will substitute these roots into the solution we will get some oscillatory terms. So, that is why it is called under damped system in which we will be having some oscillations may be decaying kind of thing. Then uh, another case is zeta is equal to 1. Uh, in this case this quantity will be 0. So, you can see that uh, uh, will be having this we already defined because this uh, zeta was uh, c by c c and the damping itself is c c. So, that is why it is coming 1. So, that is why it is called critical damped system. Critically damped system and there is another case in which zeta is 0 
and it is very obvious that uh, when zeta is 0 then it is undamped system means that is damp without damping when there is no damping in the system. Let us again write the roots of these two equations here because we want to plot these roots in a complex plane to have a better understanding of these roots. So, let us say we have a complex plane in which is a real axis and this is the imaginary axis. Now, for zeta is equal to 0, what we get from this expression? When zeta is 0, we get s 1 2 s plus minus j, j is nothing but minus of the under root. So, these two quantity uh, both are same because uh, in this case magnitude of S12 is nothing but 1 and this is complex uh, this uh, ima imaginary number. So, on this plane you can see that uh, these two points which is corresponding to 1 and minus 1 on imaginary axis they represent these two points. So, the undamped system is uh, represented by these two points let us say they are A and B and when we have that uh, zeta between 0 and 1 then we will be having uh, these roots as minus zeta plus minus j 1 minus zeta square and uh, this can be represented by a circle. So, at any position at any position on this circle uh, this represent zeta that is real part real part this is a negative direction ok and this quantity represent 1 minus zeta square which is a complex quantity this quantity and basically this represent the equation of a circle and the magnitude of this is again 1 because if you take the magnitude of this two quantity that is 1 as 1 2 will be zeta this will be zeta square this first term and then plus 1 minus zeta square. So, th that gives us 1. So, from A to let us say this point is E from A to E and from B to E is representing the under damped system ok. Now, if we have the zeta greater than 1 then you will see that uh, here two roots will be there one will be always increasing to a negative direction this direction and another will be uh, going toward the positive direction this direction at the limit it will become 0. So, these are the over damped system over damped case. So, now uh, we are you can see that how we have drawn the roots of this 
uh, equation in a complex domain and various uh, cases of the damping we have illustrated. So, once we have obtained uh, the roots of the characteristic equation and we have interpreted them also for various kind of uh, uh, motions like uh, under dam system, over dam system, critical dam system or undam system. Now, let us uh, obtain the explicit expressions of these kind of response and uh, through illustration we will show how these response look like uh, once we give different kind of damping in the system. So, first let us take the under damp system uh, in which uh, the zeta is less than 1. So, how the response takes the mathematical form. So, uh, in this case the zeta is 1 that is the we will be calling as oscillatory motion. And if you substitute those two roots in the equation of motion, they can be written in this form. Small a is a constant. then this negative of this and uh, this particular terms we can able to write in the cos and sin terms using Euler relations and if we do this we can able to express this uh, a plus b cos of 1 minus zeta square omega n t and uh, similarly j a minus b here we can write sin 1 minus zeta square omega n t. Now, you can see that uh, the response it contains harmonic terms also this term which is decaying in nature. So, you can see that uh, it, uh, it, it is having negative here. So, once the motion will start it will try to decay the motion because of this term and which is due to the damping in, in the system. This particular equation we can able to simplify in another form if we write uh, this particular quantity let us say is A, this is including the imaginary part is B. If we say A is equal to x sin phi and B is equal to x cos phi, then uh, we have the relationship between the x and a and b like this or this phi is tan inverse b by a by b a by b. Now, if you substitute this quantity here and here we can able to write another form of the expression that is amplitude and this is the decaying function and sine term with some phase, phi is the phase and x is the amplitude, this is the phase. Here, uh, either amplitude or phase, uh, they are uh, arbitrary constant, and uh, this we have to obtain through the initial condition. As we know that uh, the differential equation 
of the motion is of the second order. So, we need to obtain this using the initial condition this or the terms like a or b they are all arbitrary constant. So, these uh, constants how we can able to obtain uh, let us say we have displacement at time t is equal to x naught and velocity at time t is equal to v naught then we can apply these boundary conditions in the let us say this particular form of the equation. So, we'll, we, we need to differentiate this once to get the x dot term. So, that x dot term will be of this form velocity term will be minus zeta omega n. zeta omega and t then the rest of the terms as it is plus b sin 1 minus zeta square omega and t and then there will be another term so, we are differentiating with respect to time and we are getting these expressions one minus zeta square omega n t one minus zeta square omega n this is within this bracket and then another term is there this is a big equation omega n t 1 minus zeta square omega n. So, this is the velocity term. So, both the initial condition we have to uh, these two initial conditions we need to substitute in first in this expression which is uh, given as here and in the velocity equation which is given as here and we will be having two linear equations to solve for a and b and you can see that a and b will be given as x naught and b is will be given as v naught plus zeta omega n x naught divided by omega n 1 minus zeta square. So, these are the integral uh, integral constants for a particular initial condition of displacement and velocity. And if you see carefully the previous equation especially for the displacement or velocity uh, you can see that there are harmonic terms and in which terms like uh, 1 minus zeta square omega n is there. Uh, let us write them in a separately omega n. So, this term we call it as omega d that is the damped natural frequency so you can see then when zeta is 0 the damped and undamped natural frequencies are same because this is the undamped natural frequency and here you can able to see the effect of damping on to the nat the damped natural frequency when damping is there because this is square quantity so either positive or negative value of the zeta uh, always it will be decreasing the uh, damping uh, because this term within the square bracket will be uh, less than less than 1 so 
uh, this particular case as we are doing for the zeta 0 to 1. So, in this range uh, you can see that always omega d will be less than the omega n. So, damped natural frequency always less than the omega n, but uh, if you will see through illustration when damping value if you put the especially in the structural uh, members the zeta value will be around 0.1 for that uh, the effect of uh, the change in the natural frequency to the damping will be very less. Now, I will be showing how the this particular uh, vibration or the signal or the response uh, changes with the various kind of damping like uh, here I will be showing through simulation. So, at present I am giving zeta value as 0.1 as you can see here and now I am giving the start thing. So, you can see that how the signal is decaying uh, when we are given the zeta is equal to 2 uh, 0.1. Now, I am giving another value of the zeta and I am drawing the uh, this plot on the same graph so that you can compare how it changes. So, you can see that when we increase the damping the vibration is getting uh, dampened quite quickly, but if you see carefully uh, always both the graphs they are having peak at the same time also the minimum or the mean at the same time or the minimum also at the same time at every place. So, that represent that uh, their frequency is not changing as they are going along this, but only the amplitude is getting changed. Uh, this will be more clear if we take uh, another set of damping. You can see that this very fented graph, but at this point all three are meeting at this position all three are maximum similarly as they are going along this direction. So, this is the example of the under damped system in which we have given the zeta value from 0.1 up to 0.3, but 0.3 is quite high value. From here itself we can able to see that how quickly this vibration decays, but uh, most of the structures they have lot of oscillations before they get into stationary position. So, we have seen uh, through animation uh, for different uh, damping ratio how the curves get uh, decay with respect to time. Let us see that plot uh, more carefully and uh, in this particular plot which we uh, through animation we have shown if we this is the displacement this is the time then this is a particular damped vibration signal ok. And uh, this particular displacement is the initial condition which we are giving to the uh, particular dynamic system that is spring that mass this much displacement initially we are giving it and we are allowing it to oscillate like this. So, it is decaying gradually and this decay if we join these uh, amplitudes. So, this is nothing but the exponential decay which is there in our response term at the outside the bracket and, uh, and because of this only it is decaying uh, within the bracket we had the oscillatory terms and because of that it is oscillating like this and in this case from here to here this is the damped time period which is uh, related with the damped natural frequency like this. So, time period remains same always as you progress progress here always it will be same because damped frequency is same, but amplitude is decreasing gradually. Now, we will consider uh, non oscillatory uh, motion in which uh, that is over damped system and in this particular case we already observed 
that the two roots of the characteristic characteristic equation they uh, one becomes uh, negative and another becomes positive but both are real uh, one becomes uh, toward the zero that is uh, i'll repeat this uh, the two roots uh, both decreases and uh, we have both of them as real and let us see how the expression of the response take place uh, in this particular case how they uh, they have the form ex exact form so for non oscillatory motion in which uh, we are considering zeta greater than 1 the response will be writing as exponential minus zeta plus 1 minus zeta square or this will be because zeta is greater than 1 so it is better to write in this form then the second term for the second root that is negative so this is the displacement expression for the oscillatory motion as we did in the pre uh, previous case we can get the velocity by differentiating this and uh, this expression will be again lot of terms will be there just for completeness I am writing them here. So, this is the differentiation of the first term and this term as it is. in bracket omega and t is coming from the first term then from the second term we have this quantity and so these are the displacement and velocity again we have two initial condition at x is equal to 0 x naught and at uh, this velocity at time t is equal to 0 v naught we will substitute in this two equation and we will solve for a and b which are integral constants and uh, they will take this form that is uh, a naught a will be nu naught plus zeta zeta square minus 1 omega n x naught by 2 omega n zeta square minus 1 and similarly b will be minus nu uh, v naught that is the initial velocity of the mass square omega n x naught divided by same denominator so these are the integral constant in the explicit form uh, in this particular case the response will be because we said this non oscillatory there is no oscillatory terms because all roots are same so we may have exp the o oscillation like this so there will not it will not cross this particular line below other side that means if you are giving some initial condition here x naught and v naught uh, it will come to the stra static e equilibrium position with respect to after some time but it will not go other side of the e static equilibrium position so if we have the spring mass system with the damper if this is the static equilibrium position if we disturb this to the downward direction 
gradually it will come to its original position, but it will not go up. So, that is the over damped uh, system. So, through simulation I would like to show how the over damped system uh, response can be simulated. So, I am giving zeta 1.1 which is more than 1. So, you can see that how it decays quickly. So, there is no oscillation directly it decays. In previous case now I would like to show with the uh, under dam system how it was. So, you can see that uh, with over dam system how quickly uh, the system undergo to its static equilibrium position. So, today we have seen uh, the damped free vibration analysis. We initially uh, we saw that how the damping comes into the dynamic system uh, and then how we can able to mathematically model them. For the present case we have taken the viscous damping which is uh, in which the force of the damping is proportional to the velocity and it gives uh, mathematical expression for analyzing the damped vibration that is uh, linear and uh, they can be solved easily and we have seen that uh, various kind of uh, damping the various level of damping may give different kind of response like uh, we can have under damp system or we can have uh, over damp system or critical damp, damp system or even uh, when the negative damping is there the system may go into instability zone. Uh, in the next uh, lecture we will uh, we'll extend this method especially for finding the uh, this uh, damping ratio and natural frequency how we can able to obtain experimentally and we will be taking some examples related to that. Also we will explore other form of the damping which are there uh, in the mathematical models of the various kind of damping. <laughs>